what's going on you guys back again today with another video today we're going to be working back on the s550 unfortunately today i'm shooting a video that for a very long time i wish that i would never have to do quick little backstory on why exactly my bumper is popping out the way it is i decided to take my car out and i decided to take it to work for the one time that i have i mean it's been a while since i've taken my car to work i usually drive the truck for whatever reason I decide I want to take my car out, I take it out, I'm coming home at 5 in the morning from work, something runs out, some sort of animal runs out on me in the middle of the freeway, I'm in the middle of a turn, I have no choice but to just go head on. The animal hits the passenger front corner of my bumper, makes a loud thump, I get home, there's crap and fur and stuff all over my bumper, and all my tabs are broken. Thankfully, it's just these tabs here these plastic tabs here. Unfortunately, no offense to anyone that does have these uh, quick latches here, I am personally just not a big fan of the way they look. They're very, very functional and they actually do a great job holding the bumper in place. I'm just not a super big fan of their look. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and start throwing these on. Alright you guys, so quick update, I actually ended up having to put the car up on jack stand so I could remove both of these tires. I just felt like it would make it easier on myself to get up up in here, move this fender liner, and get up in there and get that one bolt that's going in like this. Now these brackets, while they are completely useless to me now, because my tabs are broken, if I ever did decide to get a different bumper, I would obviously need to reinstall these. So that's why I'm taking this out and taking my time and making sure that I don't break anything on this plastic piece. You can actually see that screw that we need to remove is right right in there god damn it focus right there that's the screw end that we need to get out from up top so anyways I'm taking this off real carefully making sure that it all works plus I do need to remove it because I need to show the hole that's underneath this bracket for the new quick latch pin to go through so ties are off getting still working on those brackets pick it up once they're done now my initial plan was to completely remove this black bracket and just use this open center. This is where the actual pin for the quick latch goes through. But um, my brother actually brought up a good point. If I remove this bracket and I put my pin here, this backside is going to be pretty floppy. I can only imagine because there's nothing stopping it from moving back. If I leave that bracket in place like so, well now this will have something to rest back on with the pin here. Um, but to do that, I had to do a whole lot of grinding to that bracket, which, as you can see here, this whole middle piece had like lips and like a cross pattern, I guess just to give it more support. So I had to grind all that out. It's not the best looking job, nor the cleanest, but nonetheless, it still works. And the reason why I didn't want to completely tear this up is because if I did get a new bumper, this would actually still work with a new bumper. As you can see, this is the piece that is supposed to be attached to my bumper now. This is what broke off. If you look here, this clips on like so. It would clip on like that. So that's how I would clip the bumper on to this little black bracket. Alright you guys, so I'm trying to get you guys a good shot of this. I'm sorry if it's not the best, but let's go see what we can do here. Now per instructions it says to install a black bracket first. I'm going to go ahead and just do this first because I I mean either way the black bracket can still go on over this even if it is in place because it's completely open in the middle as I showed you guys. I just feel like this way it will give me better clearance to get to these nuts. So I was just reaching from behind, installing my rubber washer, then I'm going to install my metal washer, and then I'm going to go with the nut. Hopefully you guys are seeing this. Alright you guys, so I kind of measured out just by looking at it where the pin would roughly sit and then I installed the quick latch onto the, the ball pin itself just to make sure that it's going to clear this black bracket and it looks like it is pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and pop it out and that's what we're looking at. Now to find out where the hole is going to be, it actually calls for you to lift up your bumper, make this gap pretty flush and then kind of just press on it and then the ball pen itself will create a little dimple in the paint. 
that's going to tell us where our hole needs to be. This hole here needs to be three quarters of an inch. The uh, plug itself is an inch, but we need to make sure that that threaded part fits in and then use this washer to back into it. So I'm going to need both hands to do this, so I'm going to go ahead and pick it up. As you can see, the stock bracket is back in just by those two bolts. I'm going to pick this up, push on it, and then I'll mask off my area and then make my pilot hole. Alright you guys, I'm trying to catch it on camera, it's kind of hard, but you can barely see the little dimple right there. So we created a little dimple. Now I'm going to go ahead and mask off the area and go ahead and get my hole going. So, wish me luck. Since I have my pilot hole already guys, I'm going to go ahead and just mask the rest of this off. Just to try to make sure our paint doesn't get ruined or cracked. Go ahead and find it. Make our hole. Now you're supposed to be using a step drill, that's the recommended tool. But I don't really have it, so I'm going to go ahead and use this. I'm pretty sure it's going to be okay. I don't see why this wouldn't work. So we're going to go ahead and hit it. And uh, let's get it. Uh, this is going to hurt. Yeah, let's fucking run! Ouch. All right, we got our hole through. Let's go ahead and remove this tape. Hopefully none of the paint crack. We'll install our quick latch and see if it all lines up. All right guys, so it looks like our paint survived. Go ahead and just tuck this little lip in. And go ahead and feed the quick latch through. Now keep in mind guys, nothing is 100% tied down and everything still needs to be adjusted. So there it is. And then the supplied nut, I'm just going to go through the back and tighten it all down. Alright, moment of truth. There it is. So the gap is a little bigger than I would have liked it to be honestly. But uh, it's okay. Now I just need to adjust it and push the interior pin in more as you can see it's sticking out quite a bit so I'm gonna go ahead and push that in more so it sits a little better more flush or flush er I should say so I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that and I'll pick it back up alright you guys there you go the gap is definitely quite a bit bigger than I would have liked it to be I think on the other side I'm gonna try pulling up on it more but I don't know if there's much I can do nonetheless it doesn't look too too bad it actually kinda lines up pretty well with these gaps here and uh, once I align the proper height it actually is pretty flush now the only thing that obviously still stands is this kind of still flares out very little that's being nitpicky but I mean geez this is better than buying a $1,700 replacement bumper so we'll go ahead and clean up this side tighten it all up uh, make sure we put lock washer on these nuts you're gonna double nut the back side and by that means you're just gonna back another nut into the existing nut in the back just to keep it from backing off. So I'm going to go ahead and lock and put some Loctite all over this and we'll move on to the next side. Alright guys, so I know on the passenger side I was kind of all over the place and that's mainly because I was trying to learn how to do it myself I guess. Uh, now that I got a better idea and I'm moving on to the driver's side, I figured since it's kind of tight in there I can put it all together out here and kind of show you what it's going to look like out here. So let's just say this is, this would be Let's just say this would be the frame of my car, right, what's inside, and let's say my bumper is already attached to this. So the bumper's coming in this way, this is the frame of the car, correct? This is already attached to my bumper, that's pretty self-explanatory. Goes onto the bumper, this nut tines it up and keeps it pressured up against the bumper, right? This is our, uh, our pin. So the pin is going through the body's frame, and you got your one nut, a metal washer and then a rubber washer so you got that going through the, the, the frame of the car and then on the back side you got to do the exact same thing you would go rubber washer metal washer and your nut of course along with Loctite which I'm not gonna do right now obviously I'm gonna wait till it's on the car and then you would pinch these two together like so creating a grasp on the frame of the car 
And then, once you got that properly aligned, as far as the length of this on how much you want the, the ball, the pin of the, the ball of the pin sticking out to make sure you're flush up against your fender, then you back it up with another nut on the back side, like that there. So, once you're all done, and right before you're ready, this, they send you out some green Loctite. Once you're ready to completely finish off the job, you would get your spring, and this, this seems to me like this is just some sort of pressure spring. So when you push this button in, it actually provides pressure to pop it out, pop the bumper off. This, uh, I guess it would be like a like a lock, like a locking washer or something. And it basically just pushes, you, you grab a socket, put this over the ball, grab a socket, push it down, and then it would latch right underneath the ball. So the spring will be sitting like that with the washer right above it, putting pressure up against this. So ultimately, I'm not gonna use that washer yet because I don't wanna have to force it out or anything, but ultimately it would look like that. With your bumper here, this is the fender of the car. And when I repress the button, the spring will pop off the clip. You wanna hollow out this whole center part, this whole little crosshairs here, this little top lip. You wanna grind it down pretty far down so that way when your bumper goes in, it's able to sit in. As you can see right now, it's like, God damn it. Fucking sounds terrible. It sounds like a lawnmower, relax. So whenever you put your bumper on, you want it to you want for this piece to be able to go pretty far in into this bracket so it sits flush. As of right now, this would not be sitting flush if I were to try this out. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do first. Hollow this out. Move on to the car. Put this onto the car. Same steps as I did on the driver's side. Alright guys, as you can see, I got that black bracket all hollowed out. I got those crosshairs out of here. It takes, takes me a little longer. This one was a lot easier than the other side because I had found some uh, better tools to use. It, took, it still took me a little while, but if you have like a grinder or, you know, some sort of... Some sort of tool that will work better for this, then you should be alright. But uh, we're going to go ahead and throw this back onto the car. Start uh, assembling it all on the car, and uh, that should be pretty much it. I'll show you guys once it's all done. Alright guys, so as you can see, we got the final alignment done. I got everything locked tied, everything's tightened up. I got a flush fitment. Uh, we're basically at our last step of setting this up. I got the bracket back in, and I just wanted to show you guys exactly what I meant as far as the spring. So the spring's going to go... Over the pin, and then this locking nut, you want to just line up to have it go over the ball. And then an easier way to do this is you get a 17, 716 socket, and you kind of just push it in using the, so the, the socket. There you go. Now you can see that the washer is actually pushing up against the ball, and it creates a springing motion for the fender itself. So, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and latch it up. And there you go. Not too shabbily. Definitely better than buying a $1,700 bumper. But, I mean, I'm just not a big fan of this look here, of this actual pin just sitting there. I guess it's not too bad, and unless you really pay attention to it, it you, can, you probably won't even notice it's there. But I personally, myself, I'm just not a big fan of it. So, you can see that's pretty flush. You can see the gap that it created. I actually think I got this gap a lot better because I pushed up on the bumper more. So this gap is a lot smaller after learning from the front one, from the passenger side. But as you can see, this side has like a little lip poking up right here. But I mean, man, it's a $60 fix compared to a brand new $1,700 bumper. Alright you guys, there you go, another successful install on the S550. Let me know what you guys think on the comment section down below. I myself am not a big fan of having the quick latches kind of just sitting there, but now that I have them installed, they're not too, too bad. And like I said earlier, it kind of beats buying a brand new bumper. Let me know what you guys think down below. Comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching guys. Peace.